reset, and TJ Santeda has it for the Vikings. Santeda brings it right past two defenders. Look at the speed in the open ice. Santeda, great stick handling, great shot. Here's Carlotti, oh! in the end zone, it is caught! Charge, good for the pass, here's a shot, right in front, score! And that is a base hit. The run will score, and freshman pull the check. Gets the strike. Anthony Grosso is going to make sure that the Wolfpack fans go home happy. Grosso for three. He got it! Uh -huh. And somehow we made it to week six here in the girls' volleyball season. Thank you so much for joining us uh, on the Marcel Six Sports Network, where you're going to get uh, a lot of news about uh, Morris, Sussex, and parts of Warren County. And today's show, it is a Sunday night, which means it is girls' volleyball here in the NJAC. My name is Josh Willis. Thank you so much for joining us on your spending your Sunday evening with us before the big football game between the Eagles and the Cowboys, for those who care. Um, I'm going to go and I'm going to bring my co-host, Rocco Cortese. Rock, we had a good show last week, good show the week before, good show for five straight weeks, but something's different about this show. We got three guests. Um, seems to be rolling, just uh, coming off a big win um, against Morris Hills. How excited are you for this? Man, am I pumped. Let's bring him on. All right, so one at a time, we got from Morris Knowles, Maya Fromout. Hello, everyone. Carly, Carly Wemlinger and Jolie Parisi. Guys, thanks so much for joining us and spending your Sunday evening with us. How you guys doing? Good? Pretty good. good. Awesome. So, so you guys are coming off a win yesterday over your rival, Morris Hills. You face them, I guess now, what, two times in the span of maybe a week and a half and change? Um, did you guys learn anything from one game to another? The first set went, or the first game went three sets. The second one did not go three sets. It went two. You guys won in two. Did you guys as a team learn anything from a game like that? Yeah, I'd say yeah, it was definitely I mean, like. We learned a lot about. Um, go ahead. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, I think the first game we really just like, it was kind of a big game for us because. It was our dig pink, so I feel like there was a lot of other, like, emotions in the game, which kind of, like, in set two, like, especially we usually don't switch sides and, like, switching sides and being on their, like, student section side, I feel like kind of messed with us, but especially in the second game, we really had a focus on, like, being more consistent, and we were luckily able, like, to do that in the second game, even with our setter being sick and, like, running a different rotation, so we were able to like stay consistent through the second set and luckily pull out the win in two. And speaking yeah, of setters. Uh, no, go ahead, Car. Sorry, I just add to her because she was saying consistency. I think that was like such a good value in that game. And even the first time we played them, I feel like the vibes are insane because you got like both student sections and that was like a lot of energy and a lot of adrenaline from that and then going on to Saturday it was kind of just like we kind of came together as a team and out of here in two sets today come on like high energy the whole time um which I think was good and obviously with you guys getting out of here in two sets gave me time to go to see St. Elizabeth against uh Montclair so, so thank you guys for that or or, or not Montclair, uh, Montville so thank you guys for that um uh so yeah, Rock was giving me a shake of the head. Rock, they played twice in the span of a week or so. They don't play every time, or they don't play two times every year in division. But Rock, I mean, you 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 know from you know from from being a Sparta Spartan, playing some of these teams a lot of times uh, year after year after year can get difficult. How hard is it for a team having faced them so recently uh, to to see another team that soon after? Well, Josh, obviously, it's difficult to imagine having to play a team, not once, but twice, but not even like 
if I'm correct, it was like two days apart from the first to the second. Was it really that short? Yeah, it was Tuesday to Saturday. Yeah. Holy moly. Yeah, I mean, to not only, and I mean, I kind of feel your shoes because it was your rivals, but to not only have to play your rivals twice with not even a week apart, but to win against your rivals twice, that's a, a achievement of the feat that you can't even accomplish. I totally well. think that, like, Playing Hills for us every single year since freshman year has been a big deal to us. And last year we got the opportunity to play them twice because they were actually in our division. But I feel like this year especially, like, it was our Dig Pink and our last one. And we never have had a student section that big before. So I think, like, especially for the end of the season, like, the nerves were there. And then having to play them the second time around, it was just, like, Really? We were, we were, <laughs> we were just like, okay, let's not try to embarrass ourselves and like lose a second set again. Like this is our shot. I think like maybe for them too, it was like, we knew it was either like, they're going to be out for blood and try to beat us because we beat them the first time or the second time they were just like, oh, maybe like I'm a little more nervous because now I know what to expect. So. Now, I've got a really good question, uh, and I'm going to leave the two hitters over on the right side so you guys are together. So, uh, Carly and Maya, you guys had to adjust to Mary being the setter because uh, obviously you're so used to Grace setting the whole season. We'll get into that in a second. How tough was it to adjust to to Mary? And I know I saw Olga, I think, warming up you know, as a setter. How tough is it as a hitter to adjust to different setters in systems like that late in the season? I feel like that's what we practice for. I mean, during practice, I hit with Mary uh, just when we play 6-6-6. Six, 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 six. But, like, as a hitter, you have to be able to adjust to any set or any situation. I have to be able to adjust to out-of-system balls when Jolie sets me. Like, I feel like that's just what kind of what we train for. And, like, it was definitely tough not having Grace because Grace, like, knows where to put the ball. And, like, but Mary is – just fantastic and I know she hurt her ankle so it was a little rough for her but like we all we all found a way to make it work I think Carly can agree yeah I agree it's awesome to be able to have like someone in that situation like at least we had someone and Mary is awesome she is really good I think as a setter Mary's has and positive she's a volleyball player yep mm -hmm. and then and then Jolie in that in that first uh, first match against Mars Hills you were pretty much everywhere. Uh, every, ever, you you were everywhere that you were nowhere at one time. You were everywhere, everywhere, all the time. Um, as a, as a libero, as a main primary like focus defender, you know teams are going to be hitting the ball at you, you know, or trying to, or maybe trying to avoid you. Um, as a as a senior and as the libero and your quarterback in that back row, how how important is it for you to take you know? to take the reins and to teach the younger players for JB and also for freshmen and say, Hey, this is how you play the lib spot at the varsity level when the balls are coming faster and faster and faster every time. Yeah. I feel like for me, it's just kind of like, I feel like especially this year is kind of more of like a confidence thing. Just like knowing that like I could be like the person to like get like as many like first balls as it was. And like, I feel like a lot of like the reason why like I was like, I've been like more successful this year was because like, I feel like my, teammates we all trust each other a lot so, like they like they trust me to like get the ball and like I trust that like when I have a good save like I know like one of my teammates is going to be like right there to like get the ball again so I feel like that's kind of like contributed to like my success and being like more confident that like I can rely on my teammates because like no matter what like they're there to help me out and like I kind of feel like the pressure like to like make sure like I'm getting a good pass so like we can get a good set and a good hit has kind of like influenced me from like our coach and like just like her telling me like like you can get like every first ball like every ball is yours and I feel like I've kind of just tried to like shift my mentality and play like that and speaking of making great saves so rock I don't know if you've been inside the uh the Morris Knowles gym yes you, you girls you know where I'm probably getting at the basketball hoops hang at an awkward angle those green rafters are everywhere 
uh, so I think what someone tried to dig a ball from Morris Hills and it went so high that there was still dust. I think there might still be dust falling off that that <laughs> that incandescent light in the gym just to this point. Um, Rock, these players were all over the place playing balls off the backboard in you know in every game. I mean, obviously from you know for four years basically. Um, girls, how hard is it to play in different gymnasiums? Because different gyms have different lighting, different gyms have different scenery. You guys have an open area in the back of your gym, you know, and then you have one side that's closed off. It's just totally different. How how hard is it to play in just different scenery? I think it's an advantage, honestly, because yeah. we we practice in our gym with the ceilings being that low and like that annoying. We do drills where Varys like will just smack one up in the rafters and we have to go get it. And I think it's an advantage because when we go to different gyms, we we have time to like pass the ball high and it not to come crashing back down. But also at the same time, it's a disadvantage because like when Carly or and I like smack a ball and the other team has a crazy save and it doesn't bounce back down in the rafters like that's at a disadvantage because Carly and I get a lot of kills from that like if there's a touch it usually comes right back down so well then I'm sure, well then I'm sure you guys love playing in Roxbury because I know Mick, I think Mick Mike for Roxbury uh, uh coach Michael I think does the same thing as as uh as as your coach does he I, I think they mash balls off the ceiling off the dividers off the everything it's definitely not our favorite drill, but we get it done. Yeah. It's not your favorite drill. It wouldn't be my favorite. Rock, what's the hardest gym you've ever been in? Not named Sparta. Um, probably Hundred Inn Central. Why is that? Well, well because there's the gym. You, you got basically the net in the middle of the gymnasium. I mean, I played there for a tournament for basketball, and literally you shoot the ball to a point, and what would happen was if you hit, like, the net or if it wasn't high enough, it would just be an utter mess just the way the net works. Yeah, I can understand that. Well, well, thankfully, your Sparta Spartans won't have to – if they have to face Central, won't, won't have to do it down in uh, – in, a, they don't want to take an hour and a half drive or whatever it takes, and they want to play in that. Yeah, that they won't have to drive to Flemington. Gosh, no. All right, so, so ladies, so you guys are playing uh, Madison, number four seed Madison. You guys are the five seed. Uh, what do you guys know about Madison? What are you guys excited about? Have you seen them play over the you know, over the span of your time there? What do you know about Madison? Um, we actually played them, like, earlier in our season. They were one of our, like – beginning games and like our season like I think like we'd all kind of admit like didn't really start like exactly how we wanted it to like going out and like playing like Mount Olive and like losing in three like that was like the Madison game was one of our first games where like we took like the win and we also like did it in two so I feel like that was like a big confidence boost for us at the beginning of the season so I think like our main goal is just like um we're kind of hoping Grace would be back even though like we're gonna run like with whatever we have like we'll make it work, but um, we're hoping that we're just going to be able to like do it again in two and just like, move on through the rest of our games this week. Yeah, I'm so excited for tomorrow. I mean, I remember my two friends on Madison, Bruna and Caitlin. I love them. I'm so excited to see them. Um, but the first time we played them, I don't really remember, but I remember it was a good game. And I think if we just keep our energy go in with a good mindset that we're going to win, I think we'll win. Yeah, yeah Bruno's had a great team. year. Maya, what do you say about uh, about about Madison? Madison is always a competitive team. Like last year, we played them. Um, coming up second time this year, I think it'll be a good game. Regardless, they have a good program. Their coach is really good, but hopefully, um, we have the more personals team that uh, will show up and dominate rather than the more personals team I'm scared of. So. Yeah. I just looked at it up. I just looked it up yeah. and we took the first set 25 to 16 and the second set 25 to 23. So like, I think that was like another game kind of like the Hills game where like 
we really like played strong the first set and then the second set I think we kind of fell behind but I think that was one of the games we were like able to like pull ourselves out of the like little route we got into and like come out on top is that more mental than anything guys a hundred percent be honest like like because I because I I think volleyball of the big sport like like I consider volleyball a big sport some people don't but I mean I do evidently and and I think volleyball is one of the most mental sports you can ever do. Like, because like, imagine maybe like a player like Jolie, if, you know, if, if, if you start having a rough stretch on serve receive or, you know, or on defense, then all of a sudden you get an, you know, and a player gets in their own head and you never want the ball hit to you. So yeah. then like, like could, could, you know, collectively, even as a hitter, you swing, you hit one off the tape and it, you know, you hit one to the net and then you, and then you overcompensate, you hit one way out. You know, could it just be a huge mental game? Yeah, I think that's been, like, one of our, like, big focuses this year. Like, our coach is always telling us, like, to get mentally tough and just be, like, because she's always, like, like, we have, like, the physical talents, but we just need to be, like, mentally tough and, like, be able to, like, lean on each other and, like, know that, like, one bad pass is, like, not, like, who you are as, like, a player. Like, it's just one bad pass and we, like, need to get the next one. So, I feel like that's been like a big focus for us in practice. And I feel like slowly but surely we're like starting to like finally understand. Yeah, Barris is definitely very, um, like she she definitely just likes to keep us positive rather than like shying away from the moment. Like second sets, like, we're, Every time I play a second set, it's always like a nail biter because we never know how we're gonna do the second set. But like for us, once we start getting down, like if we lose a few points in a row, I think we tend to like try to slow it down. And like that's something we've been working on, especially I say like honestly, since Morristown last weekend, like ever since then we have realized that like we we can't shy away from the moment and try to play it safe and tip the ball, send over free balls. Like, we need to keep challenging them because the easy stuff just won't work as easily in the heat of the moment, you know? I also feel like it helps yeah, so much that we all genuinely really like each other. Like, as people, we all really like each other a lot. And I feel like that's kind yeah. of uncommon for volleyball teams. Like, it's always it's either like for high school or something like that but I feel like we all work together very well and like we all like each other a lot this is something we talk about a lot as well like I know if I like ever get a hit or Jolie makes a good pass or so he's running to the center like we all really want each other to do well yeah we're always and trying obviously, to our own. and obviously you can't hit you can't hit a ball with it without a good set but you can't set a good ball without a good pass so it's really you know it's 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 everyone does their job and it makes the game so much easier. Rock, um, we're gonna get to uh, to your guys up at Sparta. So we spoke about how you guys did against Sparta. Uh, it wasn't quite as pretty as you guys had wanted. Um, what have you guys seen from Sparta? Sparta is what you guys about a game away from the, uh, the the American division in the end, Jack. What have you guys seen from Sparta? What do you like about Sparta? I feel like honestly, like what we kind of learned from them was like. They were really consistent. Like, honestly, like, the second time we played them, like, um, like, Varys kind of said this, but, like, this, like, clearly this game, the first game was really, like, not something, like, that we really would like to think about. But, honestly, like, we, like, had, like, good rallies with them, but, like, they really were just able to, like, make sure, like, the ball was always, like, up and make sure, like, they were always, like, like, they were able to, like, finish the plays better than we were. Like, they were just – more consistent than us in that game. And I think that's really why, like, it turned out the way it did. I think we've kind of been, like, learning since then that, like, we all just need to, like, step in when we can and, like, get the ball up. Because, like, when we play other good teams and they're able to, like, beat us, like, that's what they do. Like, they just don't let the ball hit the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they really yeah. minimize their mistakes. Like, the serves, everything they could control, they controlled it. And they're so really make mistakes, even when we were trying to fight. Mm -hmm. Now you said about so Carl, you said about control. So some teams like to control the tempo of the game with with serve. Uh, it's, I mean, volleyball is very much a serve and pass game. Um, how how important is it 
for you if when you guys win the toss and you guys get serve and you guys can control because you, because you guys are a very aggressive serving team you know Morris Knowles is how how much do you like you know when you, when you guys win that coin flip you say hey guys we got the serve let's let's kick this thing off the way we want how much is you know is it a momentum thing than anything to just take control of the tempo I'd say oh, I think it's so go ahead Julie. No, you can go <laughs> um especially when we dig ourselves in holes sometimes a couple points even during the hills game I think we were down a couple points and really just like getting together in the middle for a second you know using the timeout and saying come on guys we can do this like one at a time let's get our momentum back then eventually you get back and it's what like 17 17 and then it's just like a race for the last couple points I think that's Honestly, something I love about volleyball is how, like, how, how much it could change, just anything like that, how it could really change. I think also, like, especially with the serving, like, we, like, do, like, have, like, a pretty strong serving team, I'd say, like, out of, like, all of, like, our skills, like, that's probably, like, one of our team's strongest, like, especially, like, we have great serve first, and honestly, like, there are times, like, we start games up, like, 7 nothing because, like, we're able to just defend her serve, and, like, that's definitely helped us a lot, and I think – like there have been certain games we've lost where like really we would have won if like we could serve better so like that's a really big like part of our game so we were able to like consistently put the pressure on the other team and like serve in and like serve tough we're really able to like win a lot easier so Rocco uh Jolie said that they have Grace starting first in their rotation who starts first for uh, for Sparta here's a quiz for it's a quiz for you Ah, man, it changes all the time. I feel. No, I don't think. Don't give you a hint. I think I know it. Who is it? Is it Erilyn? Tell me. It is not Erilyn. You got uh, the semi position right. She is a setter. She's. Just... I don't know her name then. It's Ari. Man. It's Ari. Yeah. Ari. Paleo. Paleo. Oh my god! How do I not know my own team? I don't quite know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But here, yeah. so so here's the thing, Rock. So so many teams, like Jolie said, that Grace starts first in the rotation in uh at in a service rotation because you wanna the reason, Rock, that they do that is so they can have three hitters, a max amount of hitters up in the front row. So your setter can be setting out of the back row portion of rotation. So she's got three different players she can set in the front row, you know, when she gets that good pass. So that's why the setter, a lot of times you'll see a setter starting in that one spot in the server rotation and also sometimes the setters end up usually being some of the best servers out there and we'll yeah, and carly looks like she's looking for some all right uh yeah so so sparta's doing really good west morris don't sleep on them because west morris we know that they uh they are the one seed and they you know and they us and guys they earned it right Knowles, they probably you know, you think they earned it west morris oh i agree um they are just, in my opinion, the past, what, I think we've played them all four years. Maybe not sophomore year, but we played them all four years. <laughs> Me. But when we have played them, they have been the most scrappy, consistent team. And I remember junior year, um, we went to three sets of them. And I just remember, like, Leah and I played outside, and they would just – get the most crazy digs that like i i swear like the ball was magnetized to them i think that was like their that's their biggest advantage is they're just so scrappy like they get every single ball and like sometimes their offense like might not be working but then they come back with their defense like it's so hard to score points when they literally have zero errors on defense yeah i think honestly like the one thing we could like definitely learn from them is like defense really does win games. Like, For sure. they, like, I mean, like when you have like good, like offensive threats, like it's helpful. Like you can like end the plays earlier, but like, like honestly the hardest teams to play are like the ones who just never let the ball drop. Like, cause at some point, like what Veras will tell us is like, if you put the pressure on the other team's going to make a mistake. And like when the other team just like plays defense and is consistently like, giving you back the ball to like make you make the play like that's those are the hardest games that like we usually have 
Yeah, they force you into making mistakes. They don't make m- many mistakes themselves. So they, so they say, I'm going to leave it, you know. As as Coach Amy from Garden State Elite says, volleyball is a game of errors. And they want to make you make more than, you know, than they do themselves. So, by the way, uh, Maya, your sophomore year, that was back when uh, Nicole Flore was your libero. Yes. Uh, you guys lost a two-setter. But that was the COVID year, right? No. Yeah, Corey. Yeah, and, and it was 25-15 you guys lost, and then you guys lost 28-26. I don't remember that. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I remember playing the freshman year. Josh. Josh. What? It's Flory, not Flory or whatever you said. No, it's, no, it's Flory. It's Flory, it's right? It's Flory. Oh, it is Flory. You know how I know that? Because guess what? Their oldest oldest sister used to work at sparta yep mm-hmm. i stand corrected i absolutely stand corrected. that's listen, how i know that listen and uh ashley keely led the game uh, in kills for you guys with seven um and you guys yeah this was this was this is back when april yeah april and annie no one was there wow annie no one wow that's a name so obviously now mary's on the team so that was cool all right so Defense is king, right? Sparta doesn't let the ball drop. We figure that out. West Mars does not let the ball drop. All right, got it. Check. So they're going to play a team like Randolph. And you guys have played Randolph semi-frequently, especially being in the division with them past couple of years up until this year. Um, did you guys play them this year? You know, What do you know about Randolph? They're a very different yeah. team than ones you've used to seeing. We beat them in a three-set match. They are very solid. They have some good hitters, yeah. and uh, their defense is pretty good. They could serve really well. But mm-hmm. I think regardless that we beat them, of the fact that we beat them, like, they're a really competitive team. Like, I was really impressed when they beat Mount Olive in two sets. I thought that, I think was, the, that was a big upset. I think the big thing on the road for these teams, especially in the tournament, if you're the away team – if you win the first set, you've obviously you've got the driver's seat on the road. But if you are the road team and you lose that first set in a tournament, I think it's you know it's very, very, very tough to win that second set. But if you win that first set, you kind of have them, you know, the home team back on their heels. I think that's what they ran into with Mount Olive. All right. So West Morris Randolph. Morris Knowles, Madison. Obviously, you guys play the winner of West Morris or Randolph. Two solid teams. So let's take a look at the second half of the bracket. So uh, we've got Montville against Morristown. So Montville beat St. Elizabeth. Uh, St. Elizabeth, St. Elizabeth has had a very solid season. Uh, ha- I, mean, I mean, they've won their first ever Morris County tournament game. It was against Villa Walsh in the preliminary round. Got dropped by Montville in a tough two-setter. Well, yeah. First, it was 25-20 in the second set. I think it was like 25 or something like that. Uh, Montville. You guys have seen Montville in the past. What do you know about Montville? They uh, they do not um, like I was just, Yeah, we're definitely not their favorites. Oh, boy. Yeah. I'd say like what Varys calls it, it's like it's a grudge match every time because we <laughs> – um. When before like the divisions like were realigned like for this year like we were in their division so we've played them like our sophomore and our junior year and last year like the way the season worked out we played we played them twice and one of them I think I'm not sure if it was our dig pink but I know it was like a really important game for us and it was like a really like close game to the end and there was like a play with a call that could have gone either way and kind of like we ended up going our way and we ended up taking the set. So I feel like that for like both of us is always like whoever yeah, wins an like, important game. I, I'd i say uh, as much as like, as there's like some sort of rivalry there, like we're both equally matched. And I think it's just like, if we run into them in the tournament, eventually, like it's just, it's going to be competitive. It's going to be a dogfight. But I think it's the same with Randolph. I think, like, teams that we were in the division with last year, it's going to be a rivalry game. We won the division two years in a row. Those teams, like Randolph, 
Montville, and Morristown, all of them are going to be after us because of that reason. Like Varys says, we have a target on our back, and it's a fight every game. We had Montville and Morristown beat us this year, so they like they really wanted that redemption, and I think the county tournament is a good opportunity to like come back from that. So, but um, Montville versus Morristown, I think that'll be an awesome match. Just thinking that'll about be those really two teams. Intense, yeah. I think they're both so what do you guys know about Morris times? So obviously, you know, they've got the three Atkins sisters. We got that. Um, they've got they've got a really good, a really good, uh, a really solid defense. They can they can still hit the ball. You know, they got Sarah Boger on that team. You know, what do you guys know about Morris Town? Why do you think that's gonna be such an intriguing match? I'd say they're both like really well matched teams. Like I think. Like, I don't know, from playing them, I feel like their playing styles are also, like, kind of similar. Like, I feel like like when we play them, like, we it's kind of in, like, similar outcomes for us. Like, I feel like between the two of them, like, it'll also – it'll be, like, a really good matchup. I think they both have, like, pretty solid serving teams too. And then I, I know, like, not exactly, but I feel like they each have, like, a couple, like, really solid hitters where, like, if they get that, like, really good pass and, like, a good set, like, the ball's, like – Un, like undiggable, honestly, for like some of their hitters. Definitely. Yeah, they both have yeah, really you know, good sets. Um, they have, I mean, the Atkins sisters, like everyone knows about them. They're three solid players. And I think Sarah for Morristown is super consistent. But then when you look at Montville, you have their outside. I'm really, I'm not sure of her name, but, and they have uh, Kitty Kira. Gorski. Yeah, she's she can hit from anywhere. She hits right side. She hits thirty two. She hits thirty ones. Like she hits, she hits slides. Yeah, she's like when we play them. I remember being super impressed. Like I think in that sense, they have that offensive power that I think like on both sides will just be really competitive. Like I I think that'll be a very interesting match. Yeah, I agree. And certainly uh, teams, I mean, there's some teams that are one-dimensional um, and can, only, you know, again, like you guys said, get it to one player and it's one play and it's, and it's her show. Um, but obviously, I mean, you guys aren't that, aren't that team. Neither is Montville and Morristown. There are no exceptions. So so they will they will put the ball. Um, Mikhail Voigt will get the ball to wherever she wants for whatever reason. Um, so they, the winner of Montville-Morristown, the three versus the six respectively, they will play a team that you're also semi sort of a semi semi familiar with. Um, Roxbury, they're the number two seed. They're gonna be playing hosting Morris Catholic. So what do you guys know about each of those two teams? Um, I'd say like I mean for me personally, playing Roxbury is always like that's like where I was supposed to go. So I and I know a lot of girls like on the team, and like especially playing at Roxbury, I always see people I know. So I feel like that's like for me personally. That's always like an important match, but I think they're really a consistent team. Um, like Mike coaches them like really well. I think because like the first time we played them versus like the next time we played them, like even though they were missing Vic, like still like all their other players too. Like it honestly kind of kind of felt like playing a completely different team when we played them the second time. And I know Catholic when we played them was solid, so I'd honestly think that'll be another like pretty good matchup. And let me pause you guys there. So, Rock, so we know that Roxbury is fully staffed now, finally, which is really good to see. It's 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 the Roxbury that, I mean, you guys don't want to love, but it's the Roxbury that we all know and love uh, as part of the media. Rock, now that Roxbury is, is, is fully tooled and they're ready to go, and Nick Mike's got everyone, you know, every weapon in his arsenal to use, uh, how important is it, you know, as a team where now – You've got Taylor and Vic who can kind of play, you know, everywhere now. How important is it for a team like Roxbury, the two seed, no less? That's very important, especially now, like you said, especially to have Vic Latinos back on the court. I think that's potentially a huge advantage for Roxbury, and especially if they get to the finals again, only this time to the opposing slash, if we talk about Menem's rival, Wes Morris. They might be able to pull something out, just like they did against Mendham. 
And then obviously we know a lot about Rock. We know a lot about Morris Catholic and Fiona North. You know, Morris Catholic as a seven seed, they got a D1 beach commit in, in Fiona North. Um, she's all she hails from Westfield, so she's come along. She comes a long way to the Morris County tournament each and every year. Um, and then they've got uh, uh, they got Sophia Mattingly as their setter, can also hit the ball very well. They can block. They can play a lot of defense. Bill Andaloro is a very solid defender back uh, as a libero for that team. So certainly a very good match. So, Rock, which of these two teams – or two teams, eight teams do you think has the best chance to go all the way and why? Of Morris County teams that are left. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. I honestly do not know because there are a lot of good teams left. So what? Well, what do they? Well, wait, no, guys, what do you guys gotta say? What team you guys like? Uh, more, more small. <laughs> Not biased. No, what's the what's the signal you guys do in your victory pictures? The the M? we had to switch it up because we honestly, it's been a big thing for us. We like used to do the dub pick we and everyone dub pick, and then everyone stole it. So now we do MK because we had to be original. Got it. Now we do MK. Oh, that's why. That's why half the team does that. And it, got it. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. everyone stole our dub pick. I thought it was like the signal for like. I thought it was like the signal for like a shoot set, like you know, like you know. Then I realized yeah, it's we, a did K. A, we did the MK. We figured out a new thing. So because no one can steal yeah. MK, obviously. Obviously, because now uh, victory pictures have been taken to heart. Now Randolph does it. Randolph's kind of copied after Morristown, like the bad day to be a blank mascot. And Morristown does like they like do like a pyramid and they lay on the floor and they, you know. Yeah. So maybe uh if you guys have to play them, maybe you can get some victory picture, victory <laughs> pick, or as they call Vic Pick uh redemption uh to to the Cornels if you guys were to make it that far, which 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 is totally and completely possible. So um, by the way, I'm going to let everyone else who know who's viewing the comments section is open. So if you guys want to say hi to your favorite uh, Golden Eagles, uh, yes. go for it. Um, all right. I so. honestly think that if I can share my my thoughts on the finals, go. If not us, then my best pick in the finals would be Wes Morris against Roxbury. That would be my guess because well. one and two seed. Same. I mean, hey, I know it's a one and two seed, but after playing every single team except for I think just one or two in Morris County tournament, like West Morris and Roxbury are the most consistent teams who I think would just be able to get it done regardless of the team. But, hey, if we end up playing Wes Morris, then I, I got to change my opinions. You know, I can't say that. Well, you, well, you got a lot of really, really well-disciplined teams. And obviously, you got a team like you guys know that I'm from Randolph. You guys have worn that now, um, evidently. Um, and Randolph is winning games at the right time. They're on a four-game winning streak. They've won five games all of last year they went five and 19 they're now nine and seven so you know this is a wacky a wacky season uh yeah teams all over the state doing crazy things demarest is not as good as they used to be last year uh but then again you guys move up and you guys are playing the big dog division you know you guys are you know every game everyone's mashing the ball constantly um and i feel like you guys are like you know it's 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 always a brawl when uh especially in the NJAC american Rock, there's no easy games in the Anjak American, aren't there? Oh, no, there's not. Never. Never an easy game. Never is right. So, I've got a quiz for you guys now. So, oh, wait, hold on. I have to change my my thing. I, I have the NJ.com standings open because the Mars Sussex website's got a little bit of like a laggy stat delay. So, um, so here's a team that we haven't really covered because they're from Sussex County. But which team is leading the freedom. So this is the division that's got High Point, Mars, Tech, Jefferson, Hackettstown, and Vernon. So obviously I said Sussex County. So that takes out three of the teams. But which team do you think is leading that division? I'm going to go with Jefferson. 
I think it's Vernon. Is it? It Vernon? is Vernon because Jefferson. Oh yeah, Jefferson. Yeah, Jefferson's. Uh, uh, Jefferson's Morris County, technically. Oh. I was like, we lost Rock for a second. Uh, yeah, Vernon, twelve and five. They started out one, two, three, four, five, six. Holy crap! Nine, nine and zero, oh, and then they lost five of their next six, and then they won two in a row. So they're, you know, they're, you know, they've had an up and down season, if you will. But left in the divisional race, they still got Hackerstown and Jefferson still vying for that top divisional spot there in the NJAC Freedom. So Vernon, obviously, doing some good stuff. Uh, here in the NJAC, leading their division so far. We spoke about St. Elizabeth, impressive, 12 and 6, 7 and 2 in their division, uh, 11 and 3 in the conference. And then we spoke about Madison, which you guys also have seen a bit of Madison and Morris Catholic. Madison leads the Liberty. Now, here's a quiz for you. So, the division you guys are used to be in it was the national, right? So, who do you think, without looking at the stats, so my, I mean, it's close your, I mean, it's close your spreadsheet. I, I don't have anything open. I swear. I promise. All right. So, all right. so, so who <laughs> has clinched? Who, 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 who has officially clinched the NJAC National Division title? Go. Someone. Who is in it? Or yeah, is that a guess, too? Um, I'm going to have to go in reverse order because it would give it away. Uh, actually, I'll, go sh- I'll shuffle it up. Randolph, Chatham, Montville, Morristown, Morris Hills, and Pope John. Montville. Montville. I'm gonna go with Montville too. It is Montville. Woo! Oh, George, our boss, boss man says, "What team do the girls think can be tricky in the Morris County tournament?" George, we, I think they like the one and two seeds. Other than, other than themselves, I mean, we love to see. You know, that'd be cool for Morris Knowles to be to be in there. But which which team can be the most trickiest team for anyone to face? I think Morris Town, honestly, Morris. Oh, there's Rock. We got Rocco back. I don't know what happened. My computer was acting up again. So you guys were saying what? Morristown? Yeah. West Morris. Yeah. West Morris. That's a good one. Uh, Joey, what do you say? I don't know, honestly. I'd say Roxbury. I mean, I feel like they really have like something I feel like other teams we played had like one like possible weak spot but I feel like honestly out of them like especially the second time we played them I mean it was their dig pink so like they're gonna be like fighting for the win but I feel like they really like played well all the way around I forgot that was their dig pink I think they're just back for redemption like the the first time of their season um I don't think that they thought was their best and I think they're just for revenge now like i think being like the return i think they did win the county last year right if i'm not yeah Yeah, they did yeah so i feel like that's kind of like a big thing for them because i know they won counties and they won states i want to say they won they they won no they they finished well they won their section but they in their group they lost on the road at north hundred and i was at that game that was a a wacky i was a T- oh, wow, talking about wacky games. That was that was wacky. <laughs> oh, we got another one from Boss Man from George. So, how hype is it? So, we talk about the crowd noise, right? So, how mm-hmm. hype is it as a team when you guys show up and the quote unquote uh, Knowles holes show up in the stand for you guys? I feel like honestly, we, we like really like having. <laughs> Look at my face. That's so <laughs> funny. It's it's funny. <laughs> Really and I think like especially, like, it's a lot of, like, I mean, from what, like, people said, like, it was fun for them, especially, like, it was Hills, so, like, that's a big rival, and, like, the schools are so close, and, like, people, like, know each other from, like, the other schools, so, like, it's kind of, like, it was, like, also funny, like, for them, too, and, like, the student sections are so close together, like, in volleyball, like, when you think about other sports, like, they're not that close together, but, like, they were literally, like, standing, like, five feet away from each other like they needed like a teacher in between to make sure like no one said anything that like they had to like leave so like I feel like it's and like I mean luckily like we came out on top in that game so like that was good but I feel like when we're like winning by a lot like I'm like cheering scoreboard or something like helps us and like so makes us play they they especially like this year like, like yeah 
Especially yeah, coming back George from a year of like and... restrained and stuff, having like such a huge student section for a sport like volleyball, where usually at least for our school not come to something like that. It's just so fun and it really just makes the week. So this I is honestly... second... No, go for it, Maya. All right. This is this is good because I just think that like them being there was especially for the seniors, like, was just such a great memory. Like, for me, personally, getting that last kill and just, like, slamming it on the ground and, like, having all of them go crazy, like, I'm going to remember that for the rest of my life. I think that was just, like, one of the best experiences I've ever had. Just, like, having a group of people that are, like, actually cheery one other than your parents is definitely, like, just something that feels so good. And, like, especially... Just, like, getting that last kill after, like, having such a long game, like, it was the most redeeming thing. And, like, I just remember – I just remember everyone screaming their heads out. It was just, like, so – it's just, like, such a fun environment to be in. But did you remember the announcer's call of that final kill? Because that was – you know, well, I mean, it wasn't the best part. But uh, you looked absolutely gassed after that play. It's like you got – you slammed the ball down in the uh, – in the in in the five spot of the court – and then you're like, oh my gosh. I think over. I think it was just because my adrenaline was so high. Like and then everyone it just felt like I was I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. I literally just like went on the ground and was like, I'm gonna start crying like this is so much because all of my adrenaline was built up. And then it was like all crashing down because it was all over and I could like cool down. I was just like, I literally remember like going up to Carly and Grace and being like, guys, I'm going to start crying. This is too much for me. Like it was just, it was crazy. It was just like such a crazy game. Like I think think all three of us played and Grace, I remember having a crazy game, but like collective as a team, we played our hearts out. And like, I think that just made me so proud of all of us. And like that everyone got to see it was just such a great memory for all the seniors. Mm-hmm. So, Rock, here's an answer to the question. Well, here's a question that you certainly don't know the answer to, unless you unless you do, um, unless you hang out at, at at club volleyball in this club volleyball circus more than I do, which I don't think happened. But what? So, Grace is not a setter by trade. What position do you think Grace played at club? Is a qu- is, is, is is a question for you, Maya? You look like I don't even think I know. Now. Rock, what position do you think Grace plays? Oh, man. You said, what doesn't she play a club? I'm guessing a setter. No, what setter? does she play a club? No, she is a setter. Well, right. She doesn't, right. So she is a setter. So I mean, she, she is a setter, which means she doesn't do it at club. So what does she play at club? Is she a hitter? Is she a libero? Is she a DS? What, is she a coach? Is know, she a she defensive do? specialist? I think I think Grace was a right side or an outside. Grace was Grace played um right side, outside, and middle last yeah. year. Yeah. Grace has been everything. Grace is such like that's what we love about Grace. She is an all around fantastic player. She always has a positive attitude. And obviously setting wasn't her ideal choice, but like she took the role and ran with it. Like honestly, I she's just the most most consistent setter, like I know Carly and I and Mary have all told her like how great she's been coming into the role and like do, trying her best regardless of like her experience. Like she's a utility player. She if she plays in college, she says, Coach, I'll play anywhere and she would excel in any position. So here's something that I hope you don't hurt anyone's feelings first. So April Faber last year, right? And then you've got Grace Peters this year. Who, as a hitter, who do you guys like to hit sets from? Ah, uh, don't put me in that position. Uh, all right, all right. They're both, all right, they're both legendary. We'll just say that because because Grace is in the midst of a of an April, of an awesome season. And then April and then, uh, is just April amazing. We we loved April. Like I was so I told April a million times last year how sad I was that she was graduating because I mean, she's a setter. Like, how do you, but like, then you have to go compliment Grace because she's never been a setter and she's amazing too. Like, it's, it's, you can't compare them. So, so Rock mm-hmm. last year, so April Faber was on the same club team at GSE with, with, with some, with some of your uh, favorites, some of your all time favorites. Sammy Olander was on that team. 
Um, I forget who else is on that team, but uh, we, we had a few legends on that squad uh, at Garden State Elite. So that was certainly missing April Favor a lot, but uh, but Grace is doing a nice job. So uh, we're gonna do some rapid fire, and then I'm gonna go over the 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 end of the the end of uh, week slash beginning of the next week stats stat leaders. Rock, start first. What do you got for the girls? Rapid fire. Ready, set, go. What was the toughest game you played this season? Toughest game, like most competitive or toughest, like, I wish I didn't play that game. I'd say the Madison or the Morristown game. Really? Yeah, I feel like that was a game, like, we – if we really had the momentum or like played our best, like was a game we maybe could have taken. Or but Monday. yeah, I'd say those were two games where I feel like after them, we kind of felt like if we played our best, we could have like done better than we did. Yeah. All right. I'll go now. So, so uh, we got two outsides and, and a libero right on the, in the, uh, in the, uh, in the show. So, if you guys were to play any other position than your own, what would it be? I always love that question. That's so hard. I don't I'd know. say better. I'd say if I had a pick, I'd probably be an outside again. I think I would say. Set. Nice. So totally changing the place I'm around. I'm too short to play middle. I would want to do middle, but I'm too short. But if you added like a foot, then, I, but instead of like five, six, if you made yourself six, six, then would you change your mind? If I was six, six, I think. Or you'd uh, be going D1 at that point. You'd be D1 middle. Six, six. <laughs> crazy. Yeah, All right, yeah. Rock, what do you got? If. Oh, uh, let me see. The question I was going to ask is what you asked. Is there anything that means a lot to you about playing for Knowles? I'd say, I'd say for me personally, I mean, I know like the three of us, like we were all like, we've played together since freshman year. So I feel like honestly, like that's probably like the best part of like my like experience has been like, like we all like played on the same club team Carly like swish but then we like still were always like together like year round and like I feel like just like being like such like good friends with each other like on and off the court just, like has really made it like just enjoyable to play because like well if we lose like we know we have each other's back and if we win it's just like the best feeling to like get to win with like some of your closest friends agreed we're literally all best friends. yeah I definitely even like the un some of the underclassmen and juniors like we all love each other so much. Okay. Yeah. That's the best, most redeeming part, I think, is, like, win or lose, we're all still friends at the end of the day. But it also makes it really sad being a so senior. Sad. Like, Carly always brings up really sad things. This is our last well, time. Like like yeah. The, last set, the what last set of what? What was that? No, it was, it was like, guys, this is our last warm up of this game. Like, it's oh, like, like really, like, oh, like this is the last time I'm ever gonna like tie my shoes before a game, or yeah, yeah, basically, like, yeah. or like last time I have to, or like last time I gotta smell my sneaky knee pads before dig pink games, like something crazy <laughs> like that. Yeah. So, uh, all right, so let's go through. So that was I, I, I was a fascinating. Uh, Rapid fire, if you will. All right, so let's go through some stats, and I'm going to quiz some of you guys along the way. We're going to see how much you guys know your know your foes. So, so American Division. So, who lead, who do you guys think leads the league in kills? Rocco, you're not. I'll just say the answer to this one. Who do you think leads your division in kills, ladies? Uh, I don't know her name. From Sparta. Bryn? It is. Wow. Yeah, yeah, way to go. Wait, yeah, there, there you go. 129 kills. Now, this one should be easier. Uh, Rock, you can, Rock, you can, uh, what team you think has the, the, the division leader in blocks? Which team? 
Yeah, which team has the player that leads the division in blocks? In our division? Yeah. Is it Sparta or no? No. Guys, who do you think leads the division in blocks? You, you, you may know her pretty well. Is it Shannon? It is Shannon Blaber. Yeah, Shannon! Shannon! Yeah, yeah, 18 blocks. So, uh, Go Shannon! Yeah, she, she, she went to the hardware store, bought the shingles, a staple gun, and built the roof. Um, <laughs> all right, so, and and someone you guys might also know uh, leads the division in digs. Uh, you know, you may or may not know her, but she's in the uh, top right corner of our screen. Yes, Joey! Joey, lead the, Joey leads, oh. the, leads the world, at least as far as the American is uh, in, uh, concerned, with 189 digs, so... Oh my Taking a shovel out and digging every ball uh, she sees. Now, who do you guys think leads leads the division set, uh, in assists? Grace. Is it Erilyn? It's Grace. Oh, it's Grace. It is Grace. <laughs> yes. Wait, so we have more snows representing. We have oh three God. of the four. Now, now here's one for you. This is a tough one. So we mentioned you guys serve well. Now, Rock, I told you the answer to this, so you can't say. You don't want to, you know, want to spoil the answer for the girls. So. Who leads the division in service aces? Now you guys serve well. Maybe is it someone on your team? Is it someone on Sparta? Westmore? I think I think I know. Okay, if it's Grace, I know how many aces she has. I think All right, well, it's not Grace. Is it Ariana? The, I don't. Nope, that's a good one though. Is, is it, it the girl from Sparta with the? No, no, no. The girl from Sparta with the yellow shoes. It's not Peyton Simpson. <laughs> she was really good at yeah. serving. Yeah, yeah, they love. Yeah, Peyton uh, leads the league and or leads the, leads her team in, in in service aces. She is two behind Mishka Fernandez, the sophomore phenom from from Mount Olive. Believe it or not. Huh. How, Interesting. How about that A little sneak attack from 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 Miss Fernandez? Yes, yeah, so that's so that's good to see. All right, now you guys might have known some of these players in the club circuit, so. Ro uh, one of Rocco's favorite players leads the freedom in kills. Who do you guys think that is? It's the Jefferson, Mars Tech, Vernon, ha Hackett Town. Maggie. You guys, uh, Rock, what do you say? You, you, you like that answer? I like that answer. It's Maggie for sure. C Carly? Jolie? Uh, I think she's oh. right. It's Mags. It is Mags. Ms. Yeah. Gessick has 156 kills oh, on this season. Now, one of their rivals, Mars Tech, Molly Newton's been knocking knocking everything that she sees. 34 blocks, and that doesn't lead the league. So wait, wait for that. So Shannon's got 18. Molly's got almost twice that and still doesn't lead the league. We'll get to the league or the the the, the conference leader in a second. Now, another player who played at G, uh, who who played at GSE leads their division. Diggs, who do you guys think that is? Uh, what's that? I'm gonna say Gianna Favada. I think yeah. so. I agree. G. Rock, what do you think? Is it G? Didn't you tell me it was G right. earlier? So how would I? So why would you ask? What do you think if I th thought you told me that? Oh, that's true. Yeah, I told you. I G. Think it's G. Yeah. 276 digs. By the way, Car. Uh, Jack says hi. Jack says way to go, Carly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you got fan club. Um, my brother. Oh, see, I, I wish, see, I wish, see, I, see, I wish my siblings came on the shows and said, you know, what's up, but yeah, he's know, up. I'm not, you know, you guys are cooler than me, so it's fine. Um, and Rocco, you're cooler than me too. You got more cool points than I do. All right, yeah. so uh, Jax says, Yo, my siblings yeah. don't watch this either. So. What's that? I said, hey, my siblings don't watch this either, so we're even. All right. Yeah. I guess we're even. All right. So let's speed this up because I know you guys want to get out of here and, and go to sleep and watch football and and maybe maybe do some homework, you know, on a Sunday evening um, or, eat, or eat food. Yes. Yeah. So uh, you might not know that. So Kaylee Orlando leads, leads, leads the Freedom Division in assists, 349. Uh, Kaylee Orlando leads overall and Jack in assists. John Favada leads overall and Jack in digs. Colleen Fraser, again for Vernon, representing the Vikings up in Sussex County. 
uh, 45 service aces. That does not lead the conference, which is fascinating. So uh, independence, I'm not sure how much you guys know about the independence. That's the one with Whippany Park, Villa Wall, St. Elizabeth, Parsippany, um, uh, <coughs> Mo Beard. Uh, Claire Farrell leads the league with 217 kills. 217 kills. Yeah. How is that even? How is that even possible? <laughs> well, when she has 500 something plus swings, that's what happens. That's crazy. <laughs> um, Haley Mays from Whippany Park, 48 block, 48 blocks, leads leads seemingly the world uh, in blocks. Uh, Ava Brancatella digs 166 to lead the independence. Amanda Chambers from Santa Elizabeth, obviously, if you're outside, has the most kills. Chances are your your setters have the most assists in the division, 284. Um, and then Morgan Van Oy uh, has got 37 service aces for Parsippany in the independence. Liberty, so you guys might know some of these guys. So Liberty, we got some Morris Catholic, we got some Par Hills. Who do you guys think leads the Liberty in uh, – in in kills that's one with par hills um madison's in that division any idea who leads the league in kills i i'll give you guys a hint i mentioned her in the broadcast rock who do you think it is you had an idea from madison no 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 just from the whole division itself bruna nope it's not bruna Cornell. that's a good guess it is Fiona North, the D1 volleyball or uh, beach volleyball commit, 197 kills, which believe it or not does not lead the overall league. Obviously, Claire Farrell with 217. Uh, Jillian O'Keene from Par Hills, 45 blocks, uh, and then Rock, one of our uh, our old friends, one of our guests, Gia Daswani, has 186 digs for Par Hills. Now, who do you guys think leads leads that division in assists? You guys know the setters out in that division or now? A little bit. Did you play at GSC? Mm-hmm. She may have in the past. Right now she plays at Extreme. Oh, gosh. I don't really know that division that well. Which division is this? The Liberty. Liberty. What schools? Uh, uh, Par Hills. Morris Catholic, Madison. Um, who, who else is out there? Maddenly. Yeah, it's yep. That yep. It's so so leads in assists and service aces, guys. Forty-eight service aces for that player. <laughs> Holy moly! Yeah, so is yeah, oh so has been. Yeah, so is just putting knuckleballs up there and saying, "Hey, here you go, serve, receive. Try and pass this." Now, here's a here's here's an interesting one. So you, you guys so in the national division, a division from whence you guys came from, uh four of the players who lead the major major five stat categories are from a team that you guys, you know, obviously are not very fond of now, I've learned. Um, from Montville. Who do you think leads the division kills? So obviously it's not Mo Durkin from Randolph, not Izzy, uh, not any of the Atkins kids. Who do you think leads the division and kills. Um, they're outside, definitely. She's, she's which one, so it is not Katie. Believe it or not, Joey, Carly, any ideas? Rock, any ideas? Michaela. Nope. No, she's a center. If she led, if she led her division and <laughs> kills, uh, I don't. Uh, I, I would say stop being a ball hog if I was. A, is she? But, is it their middle? It is. Yeah, it's Cassandra Chohan. Yeah. Are you cheating? No. I just. I don't know her name. I just. <laughs> middle I see your hand on that mouse, and you're like. <laughs> no, I swear. I swear. <laughs> All right. Yep. It, yeah. It's yeah. It's Cassandra Chohan. 140 kills. Now, and a player you guys know a lot about, Katie Gorski. She leads the division in blocks with 44. Uh, and then obviously Maddie Merlino, uh, they're, they're the Ray Libero, 80, uh, 80, 165 digs. Now, guys, who do you guys think leads a division in assists? So Randolph runs like a 6'3, if you will. Uh, Morristown runs like a 6'2 ish. You know, Chatham has a 5'1. You know, 
teams that run a 5-1, chances are you'll see that stat. Who do you think leads that division in assists? Is it Atkins? Nope. What do you guys think? Is it the Montville setter? No, in, no, in your old division. Is it the Montville setter? Yes, yeah. yes. It, Yes, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yep, it's Mikhail Voigt, 255 assists, which is 255, which is about 15 behind uh, Ms. Peters. And then obviously Leon Villeneuve has, uh, from Pope John, um, coming out of the division that you guys were in, down to the national, 43 aces. So those are your division overall leaders. Rock, anything more for the girls before we let them finish up homework and get ready for, for game number three of the inject tournament or in the Mars Hunt tournament? Obviously, best of luck and keep going hard and try to pull some upsets. Jolie. Thank you. Jolie, thank you. Maya, Carly, thank, thank you so you much for joining us tonight and spending yes, your you. evening with us. That was This is an absolute blast. Um, I know Morris, uh, Morris Knowles loved it. I'm sure I know uh, coach uh, Julian had, uh, had a blast getting this on social media and getting everyone seeing it. So um, much appreciated. Uh, and I'll see you guys continue success. All right. Going forward. And, and we'll check in with you guys later in the season. All right. Thank, Thank you. So much. All right. Yeah. For Rocco. Yep. For Rocco, Carly and Maya and Jolie. I'm Josh Willits. See you next time on the Morris Sussex sports girls volleyball podcast.